Wednesday, the 14th, the 9th of March, 2023. We are in the book, Ten Perpetual Hats, The Removal of the Doubts, on page 52, covering the detailed response, point number three. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموله. Sorry. Uh, before we make the start, because it's a long break, so we just uh, make a recap so that everybody understands how we are going on. First of all, this book is called Kashf al-Shuha, the removal of the doubts. And the aim of the author for this is to make sure that you understand the meaning of the Tawheed properly. Uh, that is, we call it a target of positive target another target which is that is the target of defense so he is trying to teach you how to defend your aqidah because those people who are making the doubts onto you they'll bring you something which is called shubuha and if you are able to do dismantle those shubuha then your iman will be proper so he brings to you <coughs> the major shubuha the doubtful matters that is being thrown onto the tawheed from the beginning at the time of Quraysh until today. It's all of them the same. They're all of them based upon the same thing. And those people who throw the shubuhat, actually, either they are having one of the two. Either they have misunderstanding or that is uh, a bad intention. One of the two. And they could combine. So he's have a bad intention and he misinterpret. So if he had bad intention... Um, and he mis and he had done the correct interpretation. Still, he's he's a'udhu billah, but he's actually bad intention. Maybe he had hit the target here, but this is maybe to throw the poison into the honey. Or is misinterpretation without misinterpretation? I mean, without deliberate uh, uh, improper intention, it's just like misunderstanding. So, whatever this or that, we need to tackle them. We divided the book into th four categories. If you remember, four divisions or four things. Number one, we said the lengthy introduction in which we have divided it into 11 sections. You remember? 11 sections. And then the second category, which are comprises the nine shubuhat, the nine doubtful things that the, uh, uh, that the, 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 the innovators throw at the people of Tawheed. And this second category is basically the core of the book. So it is how to refute them. And then the third category is refuting four proofs that is being brought. Because these proofs are brought even by the so-called people of the Sunnah to refute those four proofs. And finally, the conclusion. And in which he had talked about the uh, weak alibis that's been used by these people to not to implement the Tawheed. So... Coming now to, we finished the lengthy introduction. We finished as well the, uh, we could say the section number 12, which is from the second category. Yes. And we're going now through the 13th, 13th section, which is a lengthy one. It's the biggest one, actually, in the old book, uh, in which the Imam Muhammad Ali brings how many doubtful matters in that first one? Three doubtful matters. We have talked about the first and the second. I'm going to talk about the third. But I need to make a recap. So ring the first, the second, and the third. So the first, and by the way, he had, in the section number 12, he had refuted the argumentation in general. And then later on, he came to the what? To the detailed one. So he came to the detailed one. So he said, Ammal jawab al-mufassal, as for the detailed answer, and refutation, that is section number 13, in which he had brought their doubtful matters. Number one, and these people, they say, we do not associate, we do not make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We testify that Allah is the creator, the Allah, the provider, Allah is the one who does the harm, Allah is the one who is the beneficiary, Allah azza wa jal. And also I seek from Allah, okay, I seek from Allah through them, through those people who are pious. So he said to them in general, he said to them, well, answer them that these are the same people whom the Prophet of Allah fought, the time of Mushrikeen. So those people, what do they say? Uh, we go to you, O Abdul Qadir, to ask 
Allah Azza wa Jal for us. So they call upon the person, okay? But they don't say to the person, you do it for us. No, no. You carry our dua to the Almighty Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Okay? And that is their first shubha. We said we have to dismantle. The second one, second shubha is that they say that, you know, these verses that you're throwing onto us, people of Tawheed, is that you're making us like the mushrikeen, but actually we are not... Uh, making the prophets us to be idols. We're not. Uh, because we, we don't do that. So, same thing, answer him with the same thing and tell them this is the same thing that the kuffar used to do and they used to worship not just idols, but they used to worship people who are what? Pets as well. So, they used to worship the angels. So, tell them same thing that the same people who are, you know, they used to worship idols also as well, they used to worship and call upon some people who are pious. So it's not true that because you call upon uh, Hussein or you call upon Abdul Qadir, is that you distinguish yourself from those kuffar whom the Prophet وسلم, had fought. Then the third shubha, this is the one, and you have to differentiate between, the, remember, the first and the third. What is the third? Now, please tell us about the third shubha, if the kuffar says. Um... If he then says the disbelievers actually seek to benefit from them, while I don't. Sorry, sorry. If, if the not the kuffar, if the one who are throwing the doubts saying, if he says the kuffar don't, if he says, start again. Then the, say to him, do you now understand? Say say it again. If if, then he, if he says the disbelievers actually seek to benefit from them, while I bear witness that only Allah is the one who gives benefit and harm, and He is the disposer of affairs. I do not desire any, ben any any benefit from anyone besides him, and I know that the righteous have no share in this, but I turn to them in hope that Allah will accept their intercession. So the response to this is to say, this is exactly the same statement as the disbelievers, then recite for him the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Surah Al-Zumar. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَ Meaning, and those who take protectors besides him say, we, we only worship them that they may bring us nearer to Allah in position. And also the last saying in Surah Yunus, وَيَقُولُونَ هَؤُلَاءِ تُفَعَاؤُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ They are our intercessors before Allah. Know that these three doubts are the strongest evidences they possess. So if you know that Allah has clarified this issue in his book, and you have understood this matter well, then whatever follows after this will be easier. So those people whom the Kuf call the Mushrikun, the ones who throw in the doubts, they say, basically in the Shubha, that there is a difference between us and the Mushrikeen whom the Prophet of Allah fought at the time of Jahiliya. For the Mushrikeen, they used to ask their idols to provide. They used to ask, oh idols, give us. Oh idols, provide us. Oh idol, do this for us. Oh, idols, remove this calamity from us. Oh, idols, give us and bestow upon us the, the sa'ada and the happiness. Okay? So the, the, they ask indirectly the idols. As for us, we don't ask the idols first of all. We ask the pious people, but with a, 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 with a wasipa. So we don't say, Ya Abdul Qadir, oh Abdul Qadir, remove my calamity. No, we say, Abdul Qadir, call upon Allah, okay, to remove our calamity. O oh, Abdul Qadir, call upon Allah. O oh, Abdul Qadir, call upon Allah to give me the remedy, uh, the cure for my disease. So that's why the Musa, the author, he had said, the kuffar, they want from them, from their idols. Whereas the, they don't want from the pious people directly, but they want the people that, uh, indirectly, telling them to go and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says as a refutation, the author, Muhammad Luhab, rahimahullah, wa ana ashad, and I testify that Allah Azza wa Jal is the beneficiary. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who runs the affair. He is the one, the one who does remove the calamity without any intervention or intermediary. Uh, so, uh, 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 so, so when you say, O oh, Abdul Qadir, so you are calling with Ya, yeah, O oh, Abdul Qadir. Abdul Qadir is not present. Abdul Qadir is dead. So you are making Abdul Qadir is capable of, while he's dead, to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the same thing as the kuffar. The kuffar also, they would say to Allah, O Lat, ishfa'lana inda Allah. O Uzza, O such and such idol, O Malaika, intercede 
for us into Allah. That's why they said, وَمَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ We don't supplicate, we don't worship them. إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ يَا اللَّهِ زُلْفَةً Except that they will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the cream of the crop, whatever you say is, is the same. So if you have said, O oh, Abdul Qadir, call upon Allah to the uh, uh, to, to to Allah to, to cure me or to give me, you have committed shirk in uluhi. And if you have believed that Abdul Qadir, he is the one who does give you the cure, so you said, Oh Abdul Qadir, cure me, then you have to done two double shirk, shirk in uluhiya and shirk in what? In rububiyya. So the same thing, whether it is one shirk major or double shirk major, it's all of a shirk. So if you said, oh, Abdul Qadir, give me, then you have done shirk into two both. Worship and the worship in the rububiyyah and the lordship. And if you said, oh, Abdul Qadir, call upon Allah to uh, give me, because you're not, you're not going to somebody who's alive, somebody who's dead. And you think he's got power. So this is shirk in uluhiyah because you are worshipping Abdul Qadir. You are getting closer to Abdul Qadir with a certain worship, which is supplication, in order for him to call upon Allah for you. That's called shirk in al-uluhiyah. Now we're coming to the fourth shubha. Now. Then if he does not know what is, uh, then if he does not know what is considered worship and what are the different types of worship, and clarify this for him by mentioning that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says. I, I don't think you are with me. Uh, if he says that I do not worship except for Allah, this is the fourth one. I do not, I do not worship except for Allah. So I'm not sure where are you. Let me just see. Maybe you're still reading from the third Shubha. Let me just see. <clears throat> Hang on a second. So you read, again, what did you read? Then, then if he does not know what is considered worship and what are the different types of worship, then clarify this for him. Uh, okay, well, that is actually jumping here. Right, so I, if, you, if you just can find for me the following. If he said that I do not worship except for Allah, and this coming to the righteous people, I'm calling upon them, this is not a worship. Then say to them, do you agree and confess uh, and, and confirm that Allah Azza wa Jal had imposed upon you the ikhlas of al-ibadah, the sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal, and which is a right upon you? Is that what you got? No. Okay. Mm. So what, what do you, did you get there somewhere? Let me just read it, please. It says in the... Ah, uh, see, so he had jumped actually. Actually, he had jumped. Yeah, the Arabic is correct. That's what I'm just. So, in Arabic, it is there, but in the translation, is not yeah. being translated. Where are you? The translation here. Mm. My. The... Um, if you, somebody can find it for me in English, because the, oh, the the translator he had skipped it somehow. This is comes later on, by the way. What can you tell me? What is the type of worship? What is worship? That is about later on, you see, shirk ibadat. Page number 54. Page number 54. Yeah, yes. Maybe this one? Yeah, so it's jumped, isn't it? Yes. Is that right? If he then says, yeah. I do not commit shirk with Allah in any matter at all, never, but turn to righteous and not That's shirk. the one. If he then says, I do not commit shirk with Allah, no, sure. In any matter, not at, not uh, at all, and never. So this is the fourth one, the fourth shubha. Yeah. If he then says, I do not commit shirk with Allah in any matter at all, never, but turning to the righteous is not shirk, then say to him, if you admit that Allah has prohibited shirk in a matter even more severe than his, permission, than his prohibition of illicit sexual relations, zina, and if you admit that Allah will not forgive this, then what exactly is this matter which Allah has prohibited and mentioned that he will not forgive? He will not know for certain, so say to him, how can you free yourself of shirk and you do not know what it is? No, you're reading somewhere else. 
Yeah, we're missing. This is missing something. I'm, I'm going to redo the translation of mine, the fourth Shubuha. So it is in Arabic. It is there in Arabic. But you've got it. So I'm going to read for me in Arabic. Can you read in Arabic? No, let me just read in Arabic. Exactly, I'm going to match it. So you just tell me, I'm going to read and you match it. Fourth Shubuha. فَإِنْ قَانْ أَنَا لَا أَعْبُدُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَهَذَا لِلْتِجَاءُ إِلَى الصَّالِحِينَ وَدُعَاؤُهُمْ لَيْسَ بِعِبَادَةً فَقِيلَ لَهُ أَنْتَ تُقِرُّ أَنَّ اللَّهَ فَرَضَ عَلَيْكَ إِخْلَاصَ الْعِبَادَةِ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ حَقُّهُ عَلَيْكَ فَإِذَا قَالَ نَعَمْ فَقُلْ لَهُ بَيِّنْ لِي هَذَا الْفَرْضَ عَلَيْكَ وَهُوَ إِخْلَاصُ الْعِبَادَةِ لِلَّهِ وَحْدَهُ وَهُوَ حَقُّهُ عَلَيْكَ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَا يَعْرِفُ الْعِبَادَةَ وَلَا أَنْوَاعُهَا فَبَيِّنْهَا لَهُ بِقَوْلِكَ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَا يَعْرِفُ الْعِبَادَةَ وَلَا أَنْوَاعُهَا فَبَيِّنْهَا لَهَا لَهُ بِقَوْلِكَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى ادْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِفْيَةً This is where we start in the translation. Uh, so this is missing that one, that yeah. is. Jazakallah khair. فَإِذَا عَلَمْتَهُ بِهَذَا فَقُلْ لَهُ هَلْ عَلِمْتَ هَذِهِ عِبَادَةً لِلَّهِ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَقُولَ نَعَمْ So the translation of the one which is missing, up to where? Up to the ayah? Up to the verse? Yeah. Up, to, up to the verse. So if he said to you that I do not worship Allah, so except for Allah, that means this is the person who is the innovator, the person whom the author calls as well, he is mushrik, Okay, so he say, if he says to you, I do not worship except for Allah. And this resulting to the righteous people uh, is basically, uh, and also calling upon them, is not a ibadah. So is negating that is calling as ibadah. So say to him that you confess that Allah had imposed upon you to be sincere in your ibadah and your worship to Allah. And this is his right, Allah's right upon you. So if he said yes, then say to him, then show me, maybe from here, then show me, then show me this obligation upon you, which is sincere ibadah to Allah alone, and which is upon you a right. Yes? Yes. From there. Then if he does not know what is considered worship and what are the different types of worship, then Correct. clarify this for him by mentioning that Allah Taala says, Call upon your Lord with humility and in secret. Uh, so once you have taught, once you have taught him this, then ask him. Don't you understand this to be worship? Then he must say yes. Yeah. And supplication is the call. Do, do, don't you know that this is a worship to Allah? Worship to Allah. So he must say yes, and, and the supplication, supplication is the core. Of the worship. core of ibadah. So. The core of worship. So please, you add up two lines. That's what is in the translation missing. Okay. So before that, you see the two lines are going to add. If he says to you, I do not worship, you remember the beginning. If you, uh, I do not worship except for Allah. And this resorting to the righteous people and calling and making supplication to them is not a sub, it's not a worship, it's not a ibadah. Then say to him, but you confess that Allah Azza wa Jal had made obligatory upon you to be sincere in your worship to Allah. And this is the right of Allah upon you. If he said yes, then say to him, show me this obligation which is upon you. And that is making sincerity of ibadah, of worship to Allah alone, which is his right upon you. So if he doesn't know the meaning of ibadah and he doesn't know the types of ibadah, you understand me? That's what you continue. Right. Now, so he said, so when you said to him, when Allah Azza wa said, Udru Rabbakub Tadaru An wa Kufiya, so if you had called upon your Lord in 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 in, in beseeching Allah, how do you translate that? Tadaru An wa Kufiya. Call upon your Lord with humility and in secret. Secretly. Okay. So if you told him this, then say to him, Did you know that this is ibadah to Allah? He must say yes. And the supplication is the core of the worship. So say to him, then say to him, if you accept that it is worship and that you supplicate to Allah night and day with fear and hope, but then you supplicate to a prophet or other than them for a specific need, haven't you then given something else a share of Allah's worship? That means you committed shirk. Then he must respond, yes. So then tell him, if you have acted upon the statement of Allah, Tabarakah so pray to your Lord and sacrifice to him alone. And you have obeyed Allah and sacrificed to him, isn't this considered worship? Then he must say yes. Then say to him, 
if you sacrifice to something created like a prophet or a jinn or other than them, haven't you made others to share in this worship besides Allah? He must admit to this and say yes. Also say to him, the polytheist about whom Allah revealed some of the Quran, didn't they worship the angels and the righteous and lads and other than him? Then he must say yes. So then say to him, so did their worship of these things consist of anything other than supplication, dua, sacrifice, debh, and relying upon them for their, for their assistance, iltija, and the like of this? And they affirmed all that, uh, uh, and they affirmed all that indeed all of the, and they, and they affirmed that indeed all of these things are subservient to Allah and completely submissive to his authority, and that it is Allah who disposes of the affairs. Yet they still called upon them and turned to them because of their station and their desire for their intercession. And this is distinctly obvious. Alhamdulillah. This is the fourth shubha. So the fourth shubha, they call or they say that the supplication that they do to the righteous people, oh, Jilani, and they praise him, they call upon him, intercede for us for in with Allah, O oh, Jilani, make Allah to cure me, O oh, Jilani, make Allah to give me. Huh? Huh? So they said this supplication and resorting to them, seeking their help, asking them for the intercession, it is not a worship. Because the worship is uh, that is for them that calling upon this person to ask Allah, for them this is not a worship. So we ask them, what is the worship then in according to your interpretation? Is it just to prostrate to the idols and the statues? Okay. And this is what is being said by some of the, even the, these people these days, that the worship is only what? To prostrate to an idol. And even he said uh, that the worship is that to have humility and to have uh, submission or submissiveness to somebody who is, you uh, you think that he's got benefit and harm. So he would even think that he's got some sort of lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if the ibadah is the sujood, so they say, then the sujood, we don't really make sujood to our awliya, but we are asking them. We don't make sujood to them. And if the, sub, the ibadah is humiliation or humility i should say submissiveness to one who uh, we, we, we the, the one whom we that they believe in him to be some of the rububiya we do not believe that those people we call upon they have some of the characteristics of the rububiya so they say to you we don't really believe abdul qadr he's on his own can push the heavens and run the affairs no or provide no no, no. or give no no we were we believe as a human being but he's got jab he's got a place with allah so we, 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 you can't call us shirk, and we do not ask them to cure like the kuffar. We ask through them to intercede that Allah will do that for us. So for them, this is not a ibadah. So the refutation from the, the author here, rahimahullah, is to ask them, explain to us what is the ibadah. So this will not be uh, going from three points here. When you ask them, what is the ibadah? that either he will give you the ibadah interpretation correctly, they would say to you, ibadah, worship, it means humility and submissiveness by making the good uh, things to the, to the one you are submitting to and making uh, say, uh, good deeds, uh, regardless uh, of this person who is beneficial or not, powerful or not. And this is, I would say, um, they will not do it. They will not submit to this correct interpretation. Second answer of theirs, it could be, and he would say, I don't know. So now, how do you deny something you don't know? The second would tell them, how do you deny something you don't know? And thirdly, which is the one which expecting from them, they're going to say, uh, well, the interpretation of it, which is the wrong interpretation. They would say, ibadah is only making sujood, rukur, to the idols and the statues, or that is humility uh, uh, and submissiveness, submissiveness, submissiveness to the some to the person whom you think he's got some of the characters of Allah. So if you thought Abdul Qadir has got some of the uh, rub characteristics and powers that he provides, then this is shirk for them. Okay, so this is the expectation from them, 
uh, and they, this is their interpretation and definition of the ibadah. So now we give them the correct interpretation, which we say that al-ibadah, the humility and submissiveness to Allah with whatever he loves. And Allah loves that person slaughters for him. So if you have slaughtered to him, you have worshipped Allah. And he loves for you to call upon him and supplicate. So if you have supplicated and called upon him, then you have worshipped him. And he loves for you to seek his help. So if you sought his help, then you have, you have worshipped him. So now we look at the person who is the opposite, which is the one who is an elevator. Did he... Was he convinced with what we have answered him with or not? So we say to him, did you know that this is the correct interpretation for ibadah? So he would say to you, yes. So, and then this is, it will be the introduction for you to say, well, then if you slaughtered to other than Allah, then you have worshipped him. If you have made supplication to other than Allah, then you have worshipped him. If you had humility and submissiveness to other than Allah, then you have worshipped him. Okay? Regardless of whether you thought that he's got the characteristics of Allah or not. Because Allah loves for you to seek his help. Allah loves for you to uh, supplicate to him. Allah loves for you to have humility and, and submissiveness to him or submission to him. So if you had sought other than Allah Azzawajal's help and dua and all of it, then you have worshipped that thing. Regardless whether you thought he is the one who is like Allah provides or not. Whether you thought, no, he cannot do anything with his own. He can't do anything by his own. He still, you have worshipped that person. And the uh, Musannif, the author of Muhammad, had used the following verses as a proof. Udru rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya. Call upon your Lord, that is supplicate to your Lord, tadarru'an wa khufya. Secret and also in open and in beseeching. And that means the dua is supplic is worship. And also the second ayah, pray to your Lord and also slaughter. So slaughtering to Allah is a worship. So he who had called or slaughtered to other than Allah, then he had worshipped him. And also from the refutation, the second refutation, he said, okay, uh, you have actually, when you said that this is the only interpretation of the ibadah, okay, which is you have limited your ibadah is a specific thing, not in general. So you have said he who had slaughtered to a person whom he doesn't think that he's got some of the powers of God, is not a, it is not a worship. That's what they said. They said that you slaughtered to a Abdul Qadir, it's not Abdul Qadir, and you didn't think Abdul Qadir has got the powers of Allah, then you haven't worshipped him. Okay? And that is limiting their understanding to something of, which is not correct. You're limiting, and this is a very important, you could say, uh, a beneficial, beneficial principle by which you refute the argumentation of those people who are innovative. And that is, uh, when you ask the person about the interpretation of what he had negated, so he said, ah, this is not a worship, calling upon Allah, slaughtering upon Allah, and having humility submission to other than Allah is not a worship. So it's not a worship. Then you, you in, ask him into, to interpret it. So if, for example, you've seen a person who's drinking wine, come, and you said to him, khamr, drinking wine, is haram. He would say to you, for example, that this is not wine. So you would say to him, interpret for me. What do you mean when you say this is not wine? What is wine for you? Okay, what is wine? So what is the ibadah for you? What is wine for you? So either he would give you the correct interpretation, unlikely, or he would say to you, I don't know, or he would say to you the, the wrong interpretation. So uh, you, could, you, would, you could say to him, how do you say that this is not uh, wine and you don't know? You say, don't know, don't know. Or you could say that the he would say to you, for example, the only wine is only from the dates, not from the barley, not from the grapes. He just limited his interpretation of the wine to one specific item. And this is 
what uh, well, this is called the alcohol. And what I drink is not alcohol. Subhanallah. So you say to him, limiting the interpretation of wine, al khamr on the onto the juice or the extracts of the dates is actually controlling something which shouldn't be controlled or limitation of something which should not be limited. We say al khamr ma khamr al aql. The khamr, the intoxicant drink, what had intoxicated the intellect, regardless of a juice from the wine or a juice from the grapes or the barley or the dates. So always ask the person, he who negates something, interpret it. Maybe you are negating something wrong. You understand me? So uh, you are negating now these people when they say that we do not worship Abdul Qadr. We do not worship al Hussein. Tell them what is the worship. So either he will give you the correct interpretation, which is unlikely, because he will say to him, well, what you are negating is what you're doing. Or he will say to you, I don't know. So how can you negate something which you don't know? Or he would say to you the wrong interpretation. He said, no, no. He would say to you, for example, I call upon him. I call upon Hussein, but I never believe Hussein. He gives. This is what the Rafiq says. This is what the Sufi says. I don't believe that Hussein does this. I don't believe that Julani does this. We say to him, first of all, inter give me the interpretation of your rebellion. So he will give you other correct, or I don't know. Why would you negate something you don't know? Or the wrong interpretation, you would say to him, well, I call upon them, but I don't believe he's a God. You say, this is ibadah, because call, ibadah means you do something to Allah, which he loves. Allah, Allah loves for you to supplicate him. Allah loves for you to slaughter for him. Allah loves for you to submit to him. Allah loves for you to have humility to him. So if you had all of this to other than Allah, regardless of what you think of that thing, whether it's God or not, you have actually worshipped that thing. Is that understood now? I think we made it so clear that you could really dismantle the people of those people. Now we go to the fifth one. قال المصنف فإن قال If he says أتنكر شفاعة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وتبرأ منها Is that correct? Yes. Put number five. Then if he says Do you reject the intercession of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and have you forsaken it? Say to him so this person who's an elevator, who is the, the one who's sinking into shirk, he says to you, oh, do you then deny the shafa'ah of the prophet? Because I'm asking, oh, Rasulullah Ishfali, are you denying the shafa'ah? He would say to him. Say to him, I do not reject it, nor have I abandoned it, but rather he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the intercessor whose intercession will be sought and granted. And I truly hope for his intercession. But Allah, but uh, but intercession is for Allah alone. Yes, but, 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 but intercession belongs to Allah. It belongs to Allah, all of it. As Allah said, So Allah belongs all intercession. It will not occur except with Allah's permission, as He, Azza wa Jal, says. So in Ayat al Kursi, Man ladi indahu illa bi who is it that can be interceded with him except by his permission? And he will not intercede on anyone's behalf until Allah has permitted him, as Allah Azza wa Jal says. <laughs> and they cannot intercede except for one with whom he is pleased. And he is not pleased with anything other than Tawheed, as Allah Ta'ala. <laughs> And whoever desires other than Islam as a religion, then this will not be accepted from him. So, read. So, if all intercession is for Allah, and this will only occur after he has permitted it, and neither the prophets nor anyone else can intercede on behalf of anyone, uh, on anyone unless Allah permits it. And since he does not permit this except for the people of Tawheed, it will become clear that all intercession is for Allah. So I seek it from him. So I say, O oh Allah, do not deprive me of the of his intercession. O oh Allah, let him intercede on my behalf and whatever is similar to you. So I ask in Allah. I'm not asking the Prophet to intercede for me. So I'm not saying, O oh Lord, intercede. Just like when you said, O oh Lord, sorry, O oh Muhammad, intercede for me with Allah. Or you say, O oh Abdul Qadir al-Jinani, ask Allah on my behalf. So I do not ask the Prophet of Allah the Shafa'ah because he does not own the Shafa'ah. Only with the permission of whom? Of Allah. Allah. All the intercession belongs to Allah. So I ask Allah, O oh Lord, make the Prophet to intercede for me. 
I'm asking Allah. I'm not asking Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because he does not own the shafa'ah. Only Allah owns the shafa'ah. And when I call upon other than Allah, it is shirk major. So, if he said... Um, but if he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted intercession, and I seek it from the one whom it was given to, then the response to this is that Allah granted him the right to, in, the right to intercession. But prohibited you from this action. So he, said, he, gave, he said, Yes, I agree with you. Allah gave him the shafa, but at the same time, he did not permit us to call upon the Prophet or anybody else beside him. So he said, Fala tadu ma'allahi ahada. So do not invoke anyone along with Allah. Because when you ask for the shafa from the Prophet, you are invoking beside Allah another person. Now, so if you call upon Allah to request that he permit his prophets to intercede on your behalf, then obey him when he said, So do not invoke anyone along with Allah. Indeed, intercession has been granted to other than the Prophet wasallam as well. It has been authentically established that the angels will intercede. The awliya and the, and the afrat will intercede. Afrat means the children. Uh, so, are you saying that since Allah has granted... Did they take the children there? Okay, just write down, the children. Right, so this is the meaning of that. So, here, he says to him, well, it's not just the Prophet who was granted the Shafa. The believers granted the Shafa. Al-Mu'minun yashfa'u. You know that the Shaheed, he intercedes for how many of his relatives? Seventy. Seventy of his relatives, he will intercede. Believers will intercede. They will argue oh, on their behalf of the behalf of their brothers who are the help. Oh Lord, our brothers were together. We're in the masjid in Aylesbury together, sitting down for us. Oh Lord, take them out from the help. We will argue so much with our Lord Subhanahu wa Taala. We want to take these people from the help. This is intercession. So, am I going to say to you, for example, to a person here, please intercede for me, oh Ismail, after his death, huh? Or is my going to, oh, Abu Suhaib intercede for me? No. Oh, Lord, make Ismail to intercede for me. Oh, Lord, I'm going to ask for better than Ismail. Make Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet to intercede for me. I ask Allah. Because Allah is the one who's got the shifa. So he says here that angels got shifa, awliya's got shifa, even children got shifa. So... Do you say? So are you saying that since Allah has granted these people the ability to intercede, that have to seek it from them? <laughs> that's a that's another argumentation. Are you going to seek it from these people as well? Like you saw, saw from Prophet Muhammad and Jilani? No. If you are saying this, then you then you have returned to the worship of righteous people, which Allah mentioned in His book. But if you say no, then you have invalidated your claim that Allah has granted him intercession. Then I will seek it from from whoever Allah has granted it. Because they limit it only to the Prophet, by the way. They don't say we seek Prophet, but for example, Shafa'a from any person. No, no, to specific people like the Prophet or the Awliya. Right. So this Shubha uh, basically is is specified Shubha uh, in, in in seeking Dua and Istighath and help with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, you could find most of the innovators throw this shubha upon us and they say the Wahhabis or the so-called Salafis, they don't love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the proof for this, they deny to ask the Prophet the Shafa. No, we do not deny it. We don't say it. you're not allowed to ask for the Shafa, but we ask it from Allah. We don't ask it from the Prophet himself. Because asking from the Prophet it's like the kuffar, they used to ask for a lafal uzza. They used to ask, and a lafal uzza is not an idol, a lad is a righteous man who had died of righteousness. So they believe that this person has got some sort of power. We don't worship them except that they will get us closer to Allah. So this, you could say, one of those very uh, general uh, and uh, yani, repeated the shubha thrown at Imam Muhammad Wahab rahimahullah because it is you know very hard at this time to come with this refutation of this such a thing. So many of those of his contemporaries had thrown the shubha upon you don't love the Prophet of Allah. How can you deny it? you can't ask the Prophet of Allah for his shafa'ah? 
So we say that this shubha is uh, being built upon two things. Number one, that to, to claim that the author denies the shifa of the Prophet ﷺ and he set himself aside from it, which is false. Which is false. It's not correct. And the second, that the Prophet ﷺ, he's been given the shifa, and as long as he's been given the shifa, so we could ask him to intercede and use the shifa which Allah granted him. So that's why they, some of them they say, if Allah Azza wa Jal had given the shafa'ah to his prophet, then it is in the hand of the prophet. So asking the prophet this shafa'ah is just like asking something from someone who is capable of granting it. Do you understand me? So if I ask you, for example, give me the mobile, you're able to give me the mobile because you've got the mobile and Allah gave it the shafa'ah. So we are able to ask the prophet, okay, what is he capable of being given? That's what they did, Shubha, they did Shubha, the double thing. Um, they say that the Shafa'a from asking the Shafa'a of the Prophet is feasible and allowed, and the Sahaba used to do it in their life. So how do we refute? First step, that is to confess along with the opponent that the Prophet Sallallahu is being given, granted the Shafa'a. You don't say the Prophet was not granted the Shafa'a. The Prophet of Allah was granted the Shafa'a. Uh, and not only that, the author has increased. He said, we also hope for his shifa. We hope that Allah will grant us the shifa of the Prophet ﷺ. There's no problem about it. Second step is that to uh, invalidate and de demolish what they have built upon their elucidation. When they said uh, that the Prophet of Allah is being granted the shifa, so the result is that we could ask him for that shifa. You know what I mean? That's what they built upon their argumentation upon it. So we would say to them, yes, he's being granted the shifa. But when you say that we ask the shifa from him in this dunya, this is wrong because the Prophet ﷺ's shifa in its time is only when in the akhirah, it's not in the dunya. So you have asked the Prophet ﷺ something which he it did not, or was not granted to him in his time. Is it going to be granted to him what? In the hereafter. He hasn't got it now. He's going to get it when? In the hereafter. Not now. He hasn't got it now, the Prophet ﷺ. So the time when the Prophet ﷺ will be granted the shafa'ah is not the time when you are calling upon it at the moment. And that's a very strong argumentation. Just like the hadith which the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the people in the day of resurrection, they will come to the Prophet to ask him for the shafa'ah. As for the in the dunya, no. So in the, on the day of resurrection, yes, because the Prophet is in front of us. And we, in, in the life, if somebody is alive, please, uh, uh, Ismail, intercede for me uh, with the, Abdul Rahman to give me more tea. Please. Can I have more tea, please? <laughs> He's asking him, so, okay, halal intercession. Okay. And, uh, he's, and to see that you, what is the team? I can't see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, please? Your intercession didn't work. Well, I'm, just, uh, I'm capable. <laughs> didn't work. Uh, can you, do you have more tea? You want to use some? Uh, his tea is irresistible. So I would have liked him to open it because I don't know how to open it. Alhamdulillah, I'm learning now. Inshallah. Okay. Is it a heavy dose today? Okay. Do you understand the club? Alhamdulillah. So no, no headaches. Very good. Mashallah. So this is the second step. Okay. We say to them that the time for the shafa to be granted is not this third step, that the shafa is not owned. Uh, but the Prophet وسلم, even if he's been given that shifa, even if he's been, because if you remember the Prophet of Allah, at his time, he wanted to intercede to whom? To Abu Talib. But was he granted? No. He wanted to intercede for Abu Talib, his uncle. But he was being prevented. Allah, he had actually started calling upon Allah even when he died upon shirk. So he's being granted the shifa to ask, and he was a prophet, but he was not able to do it, even though he granted the shifa. He couldn't call upon Allah Azza wa Jalla to say, Oh Lord, put Abu Talib in 
part of us. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He had said that this shafa'a is His own. And this shafa'a will not be uh, getting anyone except for two conditions. Number one, that I, Allah, am pleased with that person of your interceding. So I'm not pleased with Abu Talib or Prophet. So even your intercession, your intercede, I'm not going to accept the intercession regarding Abu Talib to take him into paradise because Allah made it prohibited upon the disbelievers to enter paradise. It's impossible. Okay, the second one is that also that the intercession uh, has to be with his permission. So you need permission. So the Prophet of Allah will not be granted the permission, uh, will not be intercession until Allah grants him the permission. So we say that the shafa'a is not solely belonging to the Prophet of Allah, even he's been given that. Um, so if it was given to the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet of Allah, then on the day of his election, he will not seek permission. He will just directly go to Allah. You know when you have a king and he's about to kill somebody, isn't it true that his wife can just come inside and say, King, my dear husband, stop it. So not. I is a good guy. But that is not with the king of the kings. He cannot just enter the Prophet of Allah and say, Ah, I'm going to intercede. It has to be the what? The permission. Allah says, Who is going to intercede except with his permission? But another king, anybody. I mean, the wife could be stronger than the king. The lioness can be stronger than the lion. True or not? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Believe me, she's controlling from behind. <laughs> she will intercede without his permission, whether he likes it or not. Just by the looks. <laughs> by the looks. <laughs> Only the looks. The camera was not on you. <laughs> the camera was not on you, no. <laughs> just by looking, she can just look and that's it. Just look in the eye. That's it, and he will straight away. So, so the if he Prophet of Allah owns the shifa in full. He doesn't need to have permission. But Allah will not give except with his permission. That's why on the day of resurrection, Prophet he said, I will Rabbi. I will seek my Lord's permission to intercede. So he will be given permission to prostrate. And then after that, he will give praise to Allah, something that he doesn't know at the moment when he was alive. He didn't know it. He will be inspired with those words. Then after Allah has given permission, and after he had praised Allah, Prophet of Allah, he would say, Allah he would say to him, O oh Muhammad, lift up your head. Ask, and you'll be granted. Intercede, and your intercession will be accepted. If he was being given the intercession before, why well, should be? He would say, your intercession now will be accepted. No, it has to be permission. Intercede, intercession will be accepted. First, he would say, Ummati, Ummati. He's keen, he's keen about his ummah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would not say uncle, uncle, father, father, mother, mother, because what all of them are going to be in the alpha. He didn't say that because he can't intercede for them. If he's owner of the intercession, he could just say, oh Lord, I want my father to be in paradise, my mother in paradise, my uncle in paradise. But he can't because they are not under those whom Allah Azza wa Jal gave the permission to the Prophet to intercede for them. The fourth step as well so if this intercession is belonging to allah then truly belongs to allah then you ask who true owner you ask the true owner of the intercession who is the almighty not the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that allah azza wa jal he will not give permission to the prophet to intercede except with two conditions and that is permission and the second one that he is pleased on the one whom the prophet will intercede uh, for him and you are a mushrik the person is arguing with you, and um, you do not deserve the intercession of the Prophet. The fifth step that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he had given the shafa ah to the Prophet, وسلم, but yet he had prohibited you from calling him for that shafa, ah, and the proof for that, Fala Tadru Ma Allahi Ahan. Do not call uh, anyone with Allah. Azza wa Jal. The sixth step, and that is before the last. That is which we say shafa'a ah is not limited to the Prophet, but actually there are more than that. We have the angels he had mentioned, mentioned the children, mentioned the awliya, the, the pious people. Okay, and here they, it's not really the author is bringing everybody. No, there is other than as well will make as well intercession. 
uh, yet you, the mushrik, you are the innovator. You do not seek the help of those people. Yeah, you do not seek their intercession. So that's why the author he had made him to submit and abide by the following. Number one, that either you're going to say, I will be seeking that intercession from other than the prophet, just like the children, and this can be belied by the current situation. They don't ask the children for intercession. Or he would say that, I do not ask those people for the intercession because it is in the akhirah, so his word will be contradicted and it will be contradicted to what he had at the beginning confessed. Thirdly, he would say that the uh, children do not uh, own the shafa'ah. We say to them, same thing, Prophet of Allah, do not own the shafa'ah. Seventh step for reputation for this, that if you are saying, it will be said to him, if you want the Prophet of Allah to intercede for you, then say, Ya Allah, O Lord, shafa'ah fi yanabiyah. Make the Prophet to intercede for me. But do not uh, direct your speech to the Prophet Do not say, Ya Rasulullah, Ishfa'li, O Messenger of Allah, intercede for me. But direct your words to the Almighty Azza wa Jal. And as I said, uh, uh, yani, this shubha is basically uh, is a, a, an old and recent. It's still used by those people who are Qumuri. By this, alhamdulillah, we come to the end of the seventh shubha, and we would like to leave this, the fifth shubha, sorry. We leave the sixth shubha, inshallah, for in two weeks' time. Uh, but uh, if you, two weeks' time is going to be Ramadan, isn't it? Yeah, Ramadan. Definitely. It's going to be Wednesday or Thursday. So definitely. <laughs> so either we have um, iftar or something, everybody bring iftar, because I don't think people will come. Uh, we will do it just before iftar by an hour and a half. Okay, so if you want, we could discuss that, and we could do it, or we could stop the classes up to you, inshallah. So we could make the classes about Ramadan instead of the Shubuhat, okay, about the Ramadan, Fiqh Ramadan, all of this. And we hold to this, we're having not that much by them to go, we're having not that much to go. Uh, we got in the second category. The third one is very fast because only more proofs. And the last one, which is the conclusion, the lengthy one was the introduction. The lengthy one was the introduction, which we finished. Alhamdulillah. Right. We got three shubhat left in the second category. Three shubhat. Sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth. Sorry, four shubhat. But if you have any questions regarding what we heard, please. Jazakumullah khairan. And we would like to hear from you. And now. Yalla, tfadda, yeah. The one who doesn't want to have his eyes recorded on the yeah, field. <laughs> the session for the one who took a Jubeda and uh, Shir, or what about when they be interceded as well or not? When they... So, all these people who are throwing such doubts like this, no, they don't deserve, they're not going to get the Shafa of the Prophet of Allah. They're going to be deprived from it. Not only that, they might be deprived even from the Kul, how the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi and that's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would say that uh, when he sees how our Ummah, it's just like you're distinguishing the horse, which is black, yet it's got white legs from pure black horses. You could distinguish them. So you could, he, could, he could see some people who are making wudu, and they are Muslims. So he's calling them to the house, but then angels will come and take them away. So they are looking believers, Muslims, and they pray, but they've been taken away from the hawk. So what have they done? They said, you don't know what they've done after you, Umar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Proof, yeah, they've done bid'ah, elevation, they could be shayateen, what they've done, they've been taken away. And they, and they could be deprived completely from the hawk. They could, could be deprived from not to drink as much. They could be deprived for a time, and then a certain time they were let, they were let be. But they're not going to be like the believers who all drink as much as they want until they are uh, quenching their thirst. Okay? Now. Ya Akhwani, Prophet Sallam, he said, Inna Allah ihtajaz al-tawbata an sahibi kulli bid'atin hatta yarji'a anha. Allah had prevented 
a person who's an innovator to repent. That means repentance is blocked from him. No repentance for him until he goes back onto his innovation. Why? Because the innovator always innovates and he believes he's what? Getting closer to Allah. But with the sinner, he knows he's a sinner. But the innovator, I believe, shaking the head right to the left, he's getting me closer to Allah. So no way is going to stop him. So you say to him, Akhi, Bid'ah. What do you mean Bid'ah? The of Allah is Bid'ah. I'm doing the of Allah. So it's very hard to make them uh, stop what they're doing unless they clean their heart. Unless they clean their heart. And it's very hard. And the Bid'ah is closer and more dearer to the Shaitan than the what? The sin. Than the sin. So for you to make a bid'ah, shaitan loves it more because the sin, nobody would say I fornicate by get, I'm getting closer to Allah by drinking. I'm fornicating. Nobody would say that. But I'm getting closer to Allah by shaking my head, by making dhikr 200,000, 500,000. By, 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 you know, you could make, I'm getting closer by these sins, by these bid'ah. But he will never say I'm getting closer by insulting Allah or by uh, not giving the poor people the money. He will never say that. He knows it's a sin. And one day he's bound to know that I'm doing wrong. But the innovator, Allah must have. Now, Fadl Ya Yunus. Okay, I have a I have a question. It's not related to the topic, but it's more of like a personal question. Maybe should I wait until the end? Just wait. Fadl, a question? Fadl is mine. Yeah, um, what you just said, yeah? You tell him this, you say, this is your... No, you have given verses. Yeah. Gave him verses, what more? If you, if you have reached the point, so the ask it, you can tell him this, but he said, this is your interpretation. Okay, this is your... Said, no, no, it's not my interpretation. This is God Allah, God Rasul. What did Allah say about those kuffar? Whom the kuffar, whom the Prophet Sallallahu fought? I would say to you, even Abu Jahl is better than your shirk. Abu Jahl used to worship big statues, you know, made of stone. And you are worshiping little thing. Maybe it could be a bead, or something like a necklace or a talisman, something rubbish. If you blow into it, you will fly. But the statue of Abu Jahl is better. Big. Maybe even if you uh, put it down, you might use it as table. Yeah, more beneficial. So your the shirk of Abu Jahl is better than your shirk. Your shirk is little small thing. You float. Shirk of Abu Jahl, that your big one, you know. As I said, you could benefit from it, you could make the yamam on it. And yours is what? Kharaza, a bit of bead, you hang in it, talisman, ropes, abracadabraka. No, no, no. So there is no difference between what those people used to do and yourself. And Allah Azza wa Jal had said to us a number of verses. If you ask this kuffar who had kajal heaven and earth, they would say Allah. They never said it's Abu Abu uh, the Allah al No, they would say Allah. And they know Allah is the one who runs the show. Because they say that we worship them and we supplicate to them. We supplicate to them. It's not worship them that they prostrate only. No. They don't. They, 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 they slaughter for them. They seek their help. Dua to them. Humility. That's the one. Don't you ever think, because you maybe watched uh, the, the movies called The, the Message, al Risala. Yeah. And they showed you, for example, the Kaaba. They showed you the idols there and the statues and the people were prostrating. This is not the shirk. This is, you know, the, 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 the kuffar, the kuffar, they will not do such a thing like that. They will go for you know, other things which are not obvious to be shirk, which is like besieging, humility, uh, asking for dua. No, so that's why Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anhu, he did not see that much prostration amongst the kuffar of Mecca as much he had seen it when he went to Bilad al-Sham and he saw those Christian people used to prostrate to their kings out of respect. So he was affected by that. He was not seeing that much prostration in Kaaba. Then he went to the Prophet of Allah and he prostrated for him. 
So the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't say, you kafir, are you done? No, he didn't know. So he said to him, what made you to do this? He said, Messenger of Allah, I have seen these people, that's sham. They prostrate out of sheer reverence and respect to their commanders, leaders, monarchs, and all of that. And I can't find anyone who deserves to be prostrated to than yourself. He said, do not do that. For very, if I want, there's no prostration except to what? To Allah. And if I want to command anyone to prostrate to anyone, I would have commanded the wife to prostrate to her husband because of the mighty right of her husband upon her. But there is no prostration except to Allah. So as I said, the kuffar, so replying to this question, I would say, you reply to them, what did the Quraysh do? What did Abu Jahl do? You think just he's prostrated to an idol? No. He was calling upon these idols to get them closer to Allah. And this idol is not calling to something. He's an idiot. He doesn't move. No. This idol represents something whom he believes he was alive in the time. Allah to al-Uzza. It was not an idol, born an idol, born a statue. No. Isaf wa it was not a statue, was born on a statue. So they built a statue called the Isaf. No. It refers to a name whom they used to this name to be holy name, holy person. Allah, for example. Allah, the hadith says, كَانَ يَرِدْتُ السَّوِيلَ Meaning, he used to be, for the pilgrims who come to the Kaaba, he would make the dates as a paste and give it to the people who come to the Kaaba. So he was a righteous man. When he died, then the people started looking up onto him. They said, he is going to carry our dua and our supplication, our intercession to the Almighty. Same thing, what which is mentioned in the Quran. Who are these? Just statues like this? No. They are five righteous people who came in the time of Nuh alayhi salam, whether it's before or after, but they are from the tribe whom Nuh alayhi salam or from the nations whom Nuh alayhi salam used to call them to the deen. So those people, they were righteous people. Who said that? Abdullah ibn Abbas, in Sahih al-Bukhari. Karu, they were to be righteous people. So after they died, those people made a, a miniature or a, a, something small statue, okay, in their houses to remind them of the worship of those people who were good so they could restrive and do as good as they are. See what I mean? So these would was righteous people. They're not like stones. No, they made the stones to represent them. To remind them, those people should be like them. And after that, they started calling upon them to call Allah. They never said, would benefit me, would cure me. No, ask Allah to cure me. And I'm going to be calling upon you because I want to get closer to Allah. That means we do not, not worship him. We do not supplicate to them. We do not ask for their help. We do not, we do not, we do not. Because we want to get closer to who? To Allah. See, so if the argumentation is going to go to something where this person is an idiot, leave him. Why are you wasting your time? You have, alhamdulillah, first of all, immune yourself from his shubha. Number two, you have defeated him. Any person can. I'm not saying to go and sit, search for these people and start debating with them. This is all of it to make sure that you are educated, well versed into tawheed, making sure that you understand what you are as a people who calling yourself upon the Salaf Manhaj. Well, first of all, understand your aqidah properly. Okay? Now we are going to ask Yunus and Khalid. Yunus, father. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a question. Like, it's the personal question. Um, uh, it's more about my business. Is it okay if I can ask it now? If it's about your business, it's going to take a long time. They're going to explain to me. I would say to you that please put it on a WhatsApp message because if it's a long, lengthy, I'm going to ask you... <laughs> No, 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 I already have it like rolling down. Maybe at the end of the lesson. No, ask, then ask. We're going to finish now in a minute. Ask. Okay. Okay. So um, I wanted to get into the iPhone reselling business, but the issue is um, what I do is I buy used phones from people and I sell them for more. Um, but my question is that like once I buy a phone from, guy, from, from a guy and he bought that phone originally on an interest-based plan, Although all of his payment information, account information, and everything about him in general is disconnected, when I buy the unlocked phone from him, 
like the phone turns into like it, it it becomes new pretty much in the sense that everything has started fresh as it has restarted and none of his financial or personal details are linked to it I, um i've also called i'm just asking actually just to cut it short to make sure hello, hello. you're going far away i'm listening hello <laughs> okay your internet maybe is not really good but listen to me this person who you're buying the phone from if you knew that he's not allowed to sell his phone because he's in a contract with somebody else you're buying stolen phones was that understood yeah, yeah i checked it. it's not stolen you don't understand me i didn't say stolen if he is in a contract with a company where he is not allowed to sell it okay you're not allowed to buy it because you are helping him to do haram. But he is in a contract, regardless of what it is, but he owns the phone. And he is selling something which he owns, then you could buy it from him. I don't need to, to know the details. Okay? Okay. That's a simple answer for you. Definitely. Khalid? Assalamu alaikum. Salam to I I had a also kind of not a personal, but I was just, my question was, um, when you want Allah to fulfill something for you, like something that like you want like to work out, is it, um, is it good to drink Zamzam water or to give um, Sadaqah? I just wanted to know how to do that. Like if that was something that should be done. Right. If you want something from Allah to be done, you could do all of that. Give Sadaqah and drink Zamzam water with the intention of having that. Um, oh. uh, and also the most important thing is make dua that's the yeah. most important this is a weapon which is not being used for you know so many people neglect that weapon which is dua and make sincerity to Allah and Allah will grant you Mabali Ahmed Assalamualaikum Shaykh and there's a question on the chat the person just wants to know about is it true that it's good to read Surah Yasin it's the heart of the Quran and you read it when people die Huh? Again? They want to know if it's true that you should read Surah Yasin when somebody dies and it's the heart of the Quran. Yasin, heart of the Quran, is a fabricated hadith. Yasin, Surah, is from the Surah of the Quran, hasn't got any special merits other than just being from the part of the Quran. And Yasin definitely is a bid'ah to be recited at the time, whether after death or before death. And recitation of any Quran at the time of death or after death or next to the grave, this is all of it a bid'ah, or even worse, to recite Quran in the cemetery. Probably the Prophet Allah, he said, do not make your house as a cemetery and recite Quran into it. That means the cemetery, we do not recite Quran. And unfortunately, we find people, from, especially from the innovators, <clears throat> their favorite place for recitation of Quran is the cemetery. Because they are lingered and linked to what we have been talking about, the shirk, and the calling upon awliya. I don't know if you've seen this uh, Shabi Barat. <coughs> it has been sent to me, it has been sent to you as well. A grave has got lots of fruit on it. Have you seen it? When I've seen it, I don't know. I've never seen this before. Long time. So if I just <laughs> show you what has been sent to me by two imams, Imam of Hayrikim and the Imam of Maidenhead. Both of them, they sent me this same one. And that's what to me about two days ago. So this is... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> looks like a Hindu. <laughs> a grave with, uh, mashallah, fresh fruit, mashallah, on top of the grave. So this is worshipping the grave and eating the fruit at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so Allah Musta, the graveyard. I don't know if it's a Photoshop. Or is it real? But I know the Shabi Barat, which is the night of the midnight of Shaban. Uh, I will be talking about it, inshallah, in my khutbah tomorrow. Uh, it's been actually uh, celebrated in a number of masajid, which are the brave, they call themselves, the hardcore Sufis, they do that. Yeah, huh? A few days ago, yeah. Yeah, they, they did celebration. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it? No, a big one, huh? Big celebration. <laughs> 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 okay, 
طيب تفضل يا هاني دي اس ذا كويشن يت يا اي جست هاد انذر كويشن اف ذاتس اوكي يا ذا اوكي فور هيم يا اوكي كير جو اوكي ات واز ابوت ات واز ابوت زكات سو فور اكزامبل اف سمون هاد um money inside a different country so they had the money inside an account in a different country for a long time like around 17 or 18 years but then they moved from that country and they didn't use any of the money in that old bank account and then now they realize that they should pay the cat on that so would they pay the cat for every single year or every is it just a single year can tell me which country you've been hiding the money <laughs> every single year You have to pay the zakat, but every time you want to calculate the zakat, so you take from the first beginning, let's say 10 years. First year, let's say the money is 10,000 pounds. So the first zakat is how much? 250 pounds. 250 pounds. So second year, you're going to take the zakat from what? 9,000 and 750. Do you understand that? Then you take the zakat. In the third year, you're going to take the zakat that is 9,000 minus about 300, 400 and something. Okay? So you deduct from it until you reach the 10th year. So it's not going to be 250 for each year. No. Do you understand what I just said, yeah, Khalid? Yes, I understand. Jazakallah. Uh, may Allah help him. And um, inshallah, Azza wa will help him to بإذن الله تبيد الزكاة and he will be happy with that سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك زكاة الله